and that's all there is to it. And there's scarcely ever any kind of mad down the lab to on. cause you to go into abstract horror. No! Nice Hello there, you 5.6 million Awakening Wonders. I'm so glad to be on this journey with you. Through your comments below and our inquiry, we've got a wonderful team here, we're beginning to understand reality a little better. We're beginning to see how narratives shift over time, particularly around complex subjects like the pandemic and the vaccines around it. As you know, if you're a regular viewer of our channel, uh, this is a weird thing. I don't have their opinions on the pandemic. It's almost like I'm trying to avoid being kicked off of the platform or something. I don't know. Anyway, there's an interesting story in the New York Times about stuff that went on down the lab. Okay, let's get into this story. This is from the New York Times, all right? who are out of the mainstream media. This is not, oh look, me and Alex Jones met in a grove dressed as owls. <laughs> New York Times, so send your lawyers that way. A merchant biosolutions, a long-time government contractor hired to produce hundreds of millions of coronavirus vaccine doses, hid evidence of quality control problems from food and drug administration inspectors in February 2021. Right. Whoa. Oh, man, I got a feeling that poop is about to hit the fan and more information is about to come out. But I ain't going to be, I ain't going to go and do a whole bunch of talking. I'm going to let my main man go ahead and do the talking. Let's go, Russell Brain. How's the quality control going? Badly. Right, we'll hide that because there's some inspectors coming in a minute. Last thing we want them doing is discovering how bad the quality is. Is there any ethical reason why we shouldn't hide this evidence? Uh, ethical reasons, ethical reasons. This happened in February 21, six weeks before it alerted federal officials that 15 million doses had been contaminated. Wow. It's only 15 million doses. It's only contaminated. It's only a pandemic. It's only coronavirus. Where if you dare to say, oh, I'm not sure about vaccines. Oh, you're a conspiracy. Theorist. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I don't know. What if they get contaminated down the lab and people hid evidence of that? Oh. Now, I'm still not saying don't take vaccines or that the vaccine didn't have a positive impact. Here are some things that I do understand, though. The systems that were in place prior to this pandemic of centralised government control, sovereign power, corporate power, the relationships between those sets of power, media bias, the way that the media operates at the behest of corporate and government power, likely created conditions where transparency and ethical, mm, I don't know, supremacy or transparency are bloody difficult to even imagine. The pre-existing systems are corrupt. And I don't even mean corrupt in a kind of <laughs> way. I mean corrupt as in warped, broken, directed badly. And this is just one example of what happens when at scale, you entrust the manufacture of a medical product to a profit-making enterprise. Well, what other enterprise could there be? Is it working for you? The disclosure came in a report released Tuesday by House Democrats who said that all told, nearly 400 million doses of coronavirus vaccine manufactured by emergent had to be destroyed due to poor quality control. Oh the quality God. of this is not good. And even the quality control ain't been great. No contaminated doses were ever released to the public. And you can take that to the bank because we're dealing with guys who we know for a fact are like transparent and reliable and give you information on time and encourage dissent and healthy debate and opposing views. So when they tell you something like no contaminated doses were ever released to the public, if any thoughts occur to you there, there's something wrong with you. The report is the product of an investigation that began last year after the New York Times documented months of problems at Emergence Troubled Bayview plant in Baltimore. Troubled. 400 million doses. Trouble. Oh, trouble. Where should we get these 400 million doses of the coronavirus vaccine produced? I know a troubled place in Baltimore. They'll do a good job. Based on internal company emails, documents and interviews, it sheds fresh light on emergent executives' own concerns about quality control deficiencies. They ignored their own concerns. This ain't right, is it? Are we doing a good enough job? These doses were squandered, despite repeated warnings from employees. I'm warning you. I'm warning you. Outside concern. Guys, this is too much, man. I swear to goodness, because, uh, oh my gosh. It's still a hot button. It's a hot topic. But... I think it's safe. I think it's safe for me to check out Russell Brand talking about it as long as it's backed up by some actual legit information. I mean, this, this should be official and I'm, I can't be reported for anything that, you know what I mean, like this. Repeated warnings from so. employees. Morning, you.
I'm warning you, outside consultants, pharmaceutical companies, and FDA regulators that the company's manufacturing practices were unsafe. Imagine that if that was at your work. Hey, be careful with that hammer. Why? Well, these consultants think it's a bad idea. What do they know? Well, what about your fellow employees? What do they know? What about the FDA? Well, they're funded by- Ow! My bloody- Why didn't someone warn me? Representative James E. Clyburn, Democrat of South Carolina and the chairman of the House Subcommittee on the Pandemic, said in a statement, as the federal government scrambled to secure vaccine manufacturing capacity during the early days of the pandemic, it entrusted Emergent with a mammoth task, producing both Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca vaccines at its Baltimore facility. Why don't we let the troubled Baltimore facility do two sets of vaccines? Yeah, that'll help solve their troubles. The company's stock price soared on the announcement of a $628 million federal contract. It's a tale as old as time in many ways. A troubled Baltimore manufacturing company take on two mammoth contracts from AstraZeneca and from Johnson & Johnson. What could be their most? Motivation. When they're so troubled and that, you'd think, no, no, the heft of this task may be too much of us. Will your stock prices go up as a result of that? Well, yeah, probably about $628 million, but we don't care about stuff like that here at the Troubled Baltimore. Wait a minute, that's the whole reason we exist. Emergent is a long-time government contractor that has spent much of the last two decades cornering a lucrative market in federal spending on biodefense. In May 2020, the Trump administration turned to Emergent to produce coronavirus vaccines through Operation Warp Speed. Probably a bit too warped and a bit too speedy. I remember Operation Warp Speed. A lot of, a lot of um, people was making fun of it. The Democrats was making fun of Liberals was making fun of. Oh, look at him, Warp Speed. Does he think he's in a cartoon or something? Um, I remember that. I do remember that. Okay. And I know, I know, I know. A lot of you voted for Trump, but I'm just saying. I'm telling y'all what I heard, and y'all probably heard it too. Vaccines through Operation Warp Speed. Probably a bit too warped and a bit too speedy. <laughs> in April 2020, a month before the warp speed agreement was finalised, FDA inspectors identified problems with quality control of the Baltimore plant, including that separate or defined areas to prevent contamination or mix-up are deficient, according to the House report. This really helps put to bed those troubling and unsubstantiated rumours that the coronavirus could have emerged from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, because after all, laboratories are scientific places where nothing could go wrong. The idea that there's no such thing as human error in a laboratory environment is very naive and I think is just one of the ways that the orthodoxy of scientific uh, dogma supports itself. Science is of course, you know, magnificent, marvellous, brings about innovation and perfectly fantastic medicines. But what this story shows you is that the Wuhan lab leak theory is completely plausible because you're talking about human beings. Human beings make mistakes. The best we can do is have transparency, honesty, the opportunity for redemption, ongoing conversation and and inquiry and remove incentives that might make you want to hide evidence because you're so demented in the pursuit of profit that you forgot what your bloody job is. Confidential order. This brother is on point, man. I see why people enjoy him so much. He's he's a great commentator and he has a lot to say and he's very intelligent and he's willing to he's he's willing to be objective. He's not taking one side or the other. And that means a great deal to people who are trying to figure out what side they want to be on or if they want to be on the side at all. People that just want the information and don't want it to be leaning this way because we know that the information might be a little skewed to the right, a little twisted to the left, depending on what side you're on. And it seems to me, it seemed to me, I could be wrong, that Russell Brand pretty much gives it straight down, you know what I mean? Is he a centrist? Sounds like it. Audits last year showed that Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca, as well as the division of the Department of Health and Human Services that oversaw Emergence contract, all found deficiencies in the summer of 2020. That June, the month after the agreement with Warp Speed was signed, a top pandemic preparedness official warned that relying on the Baltimore plant would present key risks and that the site would have to be mm. monitored closely. Mm. Of course, it indicates that there's a problem at this particular plant at this particular time under those particular stresses. But what I'd like to draw your attention to is that simultaneously during that time, conversations around vaccine concern were being shut down. Like every talk show on American TV, all that stuff. Remember, while that was happening, 400 million doses were being destroyed. I hope that none of those vaccines made it into the marketplace. I hope. 
Internal emails obtained by the House investigators show that emergent executives were deeply concerned about those findings. The executives, oh God, bloody hell, what should we do? Is this right? I mean, I love it here at Emergent, and our troubled plant, that's my most favorite plant, because it's troubled, you know? It's got a sparkle in its eye. Sure, it's not very good at manufacturing vaccines. Oh, that's pretty important, sir. Ah, shut up! I'm already concerned! Sean Kirk, who ran the company's manufacturing operations, wrote in a June 2020 email that he'd alerted other senior executives for a few <laughs> for a few years about problems at the plant. They didn't respond very quickly. I mean, one of the troubles down at the Baltimore plant is everyone's too slow to respond to key information. Like, it's not Jane Austen days. Yes, sir, I'm writing about the concerns at the Baltimore plant. For example, people are not washing their hand. I saw one fella put his finger up his bum while making a vaccine. Oh, <laughs> what's the Letter come through. I'll check that in a couple of years. <laughs> Furthermore, I wonder if you'd be interested in a device called electronic mail or email invented by a lovely fella, I think what's called the name of Bill Gates. <laughs> in another email which he wrote to Robert Kramer, the company's chief executive, Mr. Kirk, said, of all the things we have to deliver on Operation Warp Speed, the thing that keeps me up at night is overall perception of state of quality systems at Bayview. Oh, I can't even get to sleep. Oh, Mr. Kirk, he's a troubled individual. Sir, I'm writing to urgently remind you that things at Bayview are not going well, and please, Please invest in email! <laughs> Mr. Kirk has since left Emergent. It is with a heavy heart that I tender my resignation. I'm sick and tired of the troubled plant at Baltimore and the fact that you've ignored my last two years worth of letters. Outwardly though, the company maintained it was ready. 400 million doses didn't work. The FDA ain't happy. The employees aren't happy. Consultants aren't happy. Poor yes, old Mr. Man. Kirk's writing letter after letter by candlelight till he eventually resigns. How's things going, guys? We're ready. We're ready to go, bud. Where can we make the vaccines? First, wash your hands. It's one of the main messages. But this dude is a character, man. How many movies has he written? Because that's how he, how he reacts to everything, how he review all of them, um, the information and the news that he's reporting to his people, to his followers, supporters, base, all those things. Not base. He don't have a base. Um, he reports it in a way of a of a script say on a on a tv show or a netflix series or something like that it, it that's what it sounds like but by the fall the house report shows emergence own concerns about quality were mounting in advance of a visit to the plant by fda officials now team we've got fda officials take your finger out of your nose now, the FDA are coming. I want everyone on their best behavior. Sir, what does the FDA stand for? Shut up. I've told you a hundred times. And one of these goddamn letters, for Christ's sake. Ugh. Before the inspectors arrived that September, a senior quality director warned executives that it would be critical to convince the agency that rapid improvements were underway. The director wow. wrote that the company was not in full compliance yet, but added, we are making batches now. In November 2020, one outside consultant to emerge laid out the stakes in stark terms, noting the firm was deviating from current good manufacturing practices, or CGMP. This place is like 40 towers. <laughs> Who's running this plant? This Ultimately, crazy. Emergent will have to decide what level of risk they're willing to accept. Well, not much. It's just like a vaccine in a pandemic. I learn my vaccine making on the streets, dog. I like to play wild. I don't go by the normal rules. Well, you do have to go by the rules. You have to go by the good manufacturing practices. But this is one of those... <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those where you really bear listen to me. <laughs> They're actually on the edge now, look. Where you really bear listen to me and do exactly what I tell you to. Wow, they should not be making vaccines down that bottom of plot. They shouldn't be making Diet Coke, should they? They shouldn't be making anything that goes in anyone's wow, mouth or man. body. The console right, I'm stating very loudly. He's actually trying to shout in a letter. I'm stating very loudly that this work is non-CGMP compliant and a direct regulatory risk. Now, right, so someone that had a government contract contract from your government. That means your money. You were paying for all this was being told by external consultants. And it sounds terrifying. If you've got a letter like that from your kid's school, the next thing is, your kid ain't coming out of school no more, isn't it? Or if you're from your boss, get out, you're fired. This was doing this to manufacturers of vaccines at a time where people were like, I'm worried, what if them vaccines, we don't know, isn't it not been out long enough? How do we trust the people at that, particularly that trouble plant in Baltimore? I can hear, listen, they're playing music. Who let the dogs out? No, oh, come on, should they be listening to that one? Who let the dogs out? Now, they're good guys down there. They're mavericks. They're maverick vaccine makers. During the September visit, the agency noted deficiencies. You bet. 
When officials returned in February 2021, emergent employees sought to hide potential problems, according to the House report. Oh Shoving stuff down the back of cabinets and that. How are you going to hide it, man? You know how much trouble you can get into? All the times that we had to prepare for inspections at my old job, man, please, you try to hide something. You can't. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Because now it's intentional. When it's intentional, it's criminal. That's criminal. When you intentionally hide something that you know is effed up, that's now criminal. Unless I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. And it wouldn't be a first because I spent many times where I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. But I was just, you know, going off of my own experiences. And that, it might not be the best thing to do. But, hey, from what I know, from what I know, huh, it's criminal if you know about right. it. Right. How's everything going here at the Baltimore Park? Oh, yeah, it's great. And what's that down the back of that cabinet? They're treating, like, this inspection from the FDA like your mum's told you to tidy your bedroom. Previously, Emergent had placed yellow tags on containers holding part of a batch of Johnson & Johnson's vaccine that was suspected to have quality problems. There's quality problems here. Get the old yellow label on it. Old yellow. That's the way we keep things safe here down in Baltimore. But employees removed tags. <laughs> of course they removed they the tags shortly before the FDA visit and put them back on after the agency officials had left. That is a sitcom plot. Boss, what should we do with these vaccines that there was quality control problems? Should we throw them out that into the bin? Don't be ridiculous. Criminal. Put a yellow label on them. But what about when the FDA inspectors come? Take the yellow labels off. And what about after that? Put the labels back on. What if it got mixed up? Ah, quiet you. Who's running this laboratory? The Free Stooges. Senior managers and an executive vice president of the company were aware of those actions, the House report found. Went right up to the boardroom. We're going to do this yellow label plan. Hmm, that sounds good. Okay. What is the plan? We put yellow labels on the bad batch instead of throwing them away. Go on. And then when the FDA inspectors come, yeah, we take the yellow labels off. That way they don't know we got a bad batch, see? Good, good, I like it. But what about after? We stick that yellow label straight back on. That way nobody gets a bad vaccine. I like you. Take the rest of the week off. In an email obtained by the committee, an outside consultant to emergent wrote that the purpose of removing the tags appeared to have been <laughs> to avoid drawing attention to the potentially problematic containers. Those yellow labels, won't they draw attention to them? Well, yeah, that's so wow, that we don't man. actually accidentally release that's them into the we market. Took them off. Well, take those yellow labels off of there. House investigators wrote that despite this apparent attempt to impede oversight, the FDA still identified serious quality concerns but granted emergence some leniency. What I suppose the serious side of this, <laughs> I mean, obviously, there is a serious side to this, and the serious side of it is that if that's what we know about, what don't we know about? Do you imagine that we know the totality of potential problems and complexity or do you think it's possible that there are things we don't know about many things we don't know about um they only reporting what they uncovered they're not reporting what they didn't that really mm. wow that's horrible man we know that things are concealed it is good that this has come out in the new york times it's good mm. that there are processes checks and balances that have revealed to us this information let's take that for for what it is but what it suggests is that during a climate where it weren't possible to have open discussions where people were rallying to have joe rogan kicked off of the bloody airwaves because he was having open conversations about this stuff where other people have been shut down lost their jobs livelihoods like health care professionals who were reluctant to take vaccines were fired i mean it's still complicated still can't travel without vaccines and stuff. Seems like there's room for a conversation, doesn't it? You tell me in the comments below. The FDA still identified serious quality concerns, but granted emergence some leniency. Leniency is something we ought to afford one another when dealing with abstract aspects of culture, conversation, family life, cultural life. I mean, there are areas where leniency is a great thing. I'm not sure that the manufacture of vaccines in a pandemic is where I want to see leniency, which is a subjective term. How much leniency? 1%, 100%, 50%. Is there any reason why emergent might be granted leniency that people that were cynical and sceptical about taking vaccines were certainly not afforded? They were ridiculed and condemned. Let's have a look if there is any reason. Today, close to 45% of the FDA budget comes from the user fees that companies pay when they apply for approval of a medical device or drug. Wow. Okay, so the FDA is in a financial partnership with the companies that it regulates. So it can't have an adversarial condemnatory relationship relationship with them. In late March 2021, Emergent notified the Department of Health and Human Services about the contaminated doses. That itself a series of events, which were probably bloody ridiculous, that led to the House investigation and culminated with the Biden administration terminating Emergent.
emergence vaccine production contract in November 2021. There's no evidence that there are any contaminated doses released to the public. And the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, you know, with the yellow label switcheroo, that's not got any problems as far as I know. U.S. regulators. So instead of arresting them, they went ahead and fired them and got and got somebody else to um to take care of the the contract. They canceled their contract. That's a lot of money they lost, man. That's mm, they they earned it. They earned well, switcheroo. That's it. not got any worse. problems as far as I know. U.S. regulators on Thursday strictly limited who can receive Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine due to the ongoing risk of rare but serious blood clots. So. That's another area, isn't it, about vaccine efficacy and the consequences of this pandemic that it's difficult to discuss. Why can't we be transparent about every area without wanting to generate hysteria or even wanting to be particularly cynical? Open, transparent conversation and the ability for individuals to make their own choices about their own bodies seems to be in the news elsewhere. And it's a sentiment I broadly agree with. Freedom, liberty, leave people alone. Some social responsibility, some means to look after vulnerable people, because ultimately we're all vulnerable people. We're all going to get sick and die sooner or later. And what underwrote the measures taken to mitigate the dangers of this pandemic was the understanding that life is sacred, that all of us are valuable. And if that means we should be locked in our homes, if that means we should take vaccines, if that means we should wear masks, OK, we'll do all of that because human life is sacred. Whether people have got comorbidities, have been ill or are old or in other ways vulnerable, their lives are still important and sacred and we should do whatever we can to take care of one another. And for me, that's a society I want to live in, where everywhere we go, we see respect for one another, a willingness to care for one another, a, a, an acceptance that we're all going to trip up and stumble and fall, but our systems are built on optimistic ideas about humanity not pessimistic ones. I'm not naive. I know human beings are flawed. By God, I know that now. But why not create systems that generate trust and honesty? To do that, you're going to need freedom of speech and you're going to need transparency as well as a good many other things. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Give this... Yeah. <laughs> what he said. What he said. And uh, I wanted to add my two pennies, but he knew a great deal um, well, he knows a great deal more and he's very well studied. That's one reason why I really like to check out his videos. I apologize if I wasn't stopping it as much as you would like when it comes to a reaction is concerned. I know some people are like, man, stop stopping it. Sometimes we don't stop it enough because we didn't give out two pennies enough. But I'm learning something. I don't like to talk too much about anything I don't have a great deal of knowledge on um, until I learn something about it. So the next time I react on something that has to do with this, I will actually have something to say, a lot more to say anyway. But hopefully you still enjoyed it. Please let me know what you thought about this in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that subscribe button or the super thanks button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I'm Van and now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video and hopefully inside the Patreon as well. And we have a great deal of playlists for everyone that we react to on this channel. Please feel free to check them out and let me know what you thought about them. All right. All right. See you next time. Love you.